guys, there tends to be what I tend to find now a huge difference between the various levels of success within people in the stock photography game. If you guys have been seeing my videos recently, and I'm, I'm trying to really ramp them up for you guys because for the past few months, I really haven't been uploading as I normally consistently would. As you guys know, I've been super, super active working on my own businesses behind the scenes, but I still want to do my duty and give you guys some really good videos. With that being said, I've seen this really, really, really huge discrepancy between people in the stock photography game. And I think it's actually going to get worse. I think it's going to become more and more of a discrepancy over time. And I want to explain why. Because this is really most people's final warning in the stock photography game, okay? I have had a history, and I'm not trying to up myself or big up myself, but this is the truth. I've had a history of predicting things in various businesses and being correct, okay? I talked about this with Redbubble, Society6, Zazzle. I talked about how companies are going to start charging extra. They might charge more fees. They're going to charge uh, memberships. Like, for example, Society6, you have to pay monthly, things like that right? And I, I only could predict certain behaviors and certain things because I think of where is the logical next point for the business to move in. And I see where stock photography is going right now. And it's going to become uh, kind of like in, in a way, and hopefully people don't take offense to this, but this is completely true. In a way, almost like a third world country. See, in third world countries, let's take India, for example, there's a huge discrepancy, a, a multitude of discrepancy between a billionaire and somebody who's poor. And the poorest of the poor in India don't even have houses to sleep in. Uh, you, they'd be lucky if they had a cardboard box to sleep in. And I'm not exaggerating. They're on the streets begging for food. I mean, really, really sad stuff. But this is the truth. In stock photography, is not going to be really any different. The reason why I say that is because you have to look at the resources the individual has access to. Now, take away the whole, you know, third world country thing for just a second, and now think about the population of uploaders on various stock photography sites, okay? So, here I am on a stock photography site, let's use Adobe Stock, but this is really going to be amplified on Adobe Stock just because Adobe Stock is most well-known, but there's going to be other sites that are all going to experience the same thing on a very significant level. You're not going to be able to run to any other site that will change this for you pretty much. Uh, because most of, I don't want to say most of the sites, but the sites that accept AI production, th this is where they're going to feel it the most, all right? So let me explain. What you tend to see here is this emergence of technologies around AI and automation, specifically the videos that I've shown you guys over the past couple of months. Like there's a video I made here two months ago, really probably three months ago now, but it says how to automate image generation, upscaling, downloading, and creating, right? Stock photography automation process. And basically what I showed was essentially how I can get a list of prompts, right? That you would normally sit there and manually type into a uh, mid journey or a computer, right? And instead of you sitting there and typing it in and then hitting submit and then waiting for the images to be created, this machine in the video will do all of that for you, okay? On top of that, it will take images that it create that you've created and it will upscale them for you. And what you could do is you could be working on something else in the meantime if you want to work. I mean, if you want to just watch YouTube videos or chill or whatever you want to do, go work out, you know, play video games, whatever, you could do that too. But essentially, you're not sitting there and burning hours and hours and hours of your day creating images. Now, why is that extremely powerful? Because what it does is it removes the hardships of scaling. Think about that. I want you to guys think about this right here, right now. It's very important. When people wanted to scale businesses, what did they have to do previously? They had to get employees. That's what they had to do. But the only way they were able to get employees is they had to have enough capital to be able to afford employees. Wouldn't you agree? It's not like they're taking on loan. I mean, maybe they had investments, but at the same time, it's capital, right? So they need some sort of money to hire employees. And the more the employees that work, potentially the more output, especially if they're, the systems are creating correctly. And then those employees will generate potentially more revenue in the system of the company. And when there's more revenue, what ends up happening? 
Well, it replaces the employees with machinery. We've seen all kinds of businesses this happen to. I mean, look at the ports. It, um, I think in Connecticut or something like that, there's machinery replacing the employees, right? And they went on some strike or they're going to go on some strike. I don't really know what the deal is, but you get the point. Every business, every business is going through this. But in specifically stock photography, this has been hyperinflated, the speed at which this is happening at. In a matter of weeks, that there, this is now the birthing of a new age in this business, where essentially an individual like me and you can go out there, invest $30, $20, $50, and not geometrically, but exponentially produce more work. Exponentially, not geometrically exponentially and really in a metaphorical sense reach concord level which is like 30,000 feet in the air it's very very impactful right speaking metaphor terms but very very impactful type of business an individual who used to let's say create a hundred images a day and upload a hundred images a day could eat up that individual's whole day they have to title they have to tag they have to create they have to upload they have to upscale they have to do so many things But now with the power of machines, you can create 1,000, 2,000 images a day. Think about that. So now you could take a month's worth of work and cram it into two hours, three, four hours. But those hours are not work that you're doing. Therefore, what you could really do is you could take four, five, six, seven, eight months of work, cram it into a day's worth of work, assuming that you're actually sitting there and doing it. Why? Because the tools allow you to do so. So really, what does that mean? It's allowing the everyday individual to to scale, to scale the business really with no mind power or no real effort. And that's the truth. It doesn't take me any kind of mental energy to sit there and click four buttons to command my machine to go ahead and create a bunch of images for me. It doesn't take any mental energy for that. So then what is the the glass ceiling? Well, the glass ceiling is very simple. It's the willingness of the individual to invest in those specific tools. The upscale tool, right? So I'll just kind of pull them up here, okay? I'm going to search them here while we're talking. Um, Akif, Akif Kaya. Let me see if I spelt it right. Akif Kaya. This is the guy that I showed you guys on my past videos. He's the guy who creates these tools. These tools, right, it comes down to the willingness to invest and utilize the tools, right? And when I say invest, I mean, let's be honest. In the business world, the world, the word invest has been a word that has been, uh, I don't want to even say abused, but truly abused. This is This is what you call an investment. You're paying 20, 30, whatever kind of cost you are per tool that you're paying, but the output is going up dramatically. So like I said, what's the glass ceiling? What is the difference between the individual who's going to be that quote unquote billionaire, metaphorically speaking, right, in a third world country versus the difference between somebody who's on the streets in this business? It's purely the difference in output and the difference in output is controlled by the automations the individual creates. Very, that's, that's what it comes down to. Very simple. So when I get comments of people saying like, oh, the machines have ruined everything. An individual who's probably saying that, let's be honest, they're probably not going to use automation and they're probably as well going to be left behind. See, AI automation tools, these are the things that either you're going to get with or you're going to get left behind. This is not something that you can necessarily negotiate with. You know, an AI is not going to stop and ask you how you feel about something and then decide to not put an output in their account because you don't like the way it feels. And this is the truth, is that it's going to leave a huge difference between two people. And let me put things into perspective. The individual who's working all day as hard as they can manually, let's just say they create 100 photos a day on a good day. They create 100 photos a day, title, tag, and submit. Okay, but the person who's using automation tools, not only are they going to tag at a higher accuracy, so double the accuracy, triple the accuracy, so 100% or 150% more effective than the person who's doing it manually, but they're also going to do in quantity 10, 20, 30, 40 times more on a daily basis. 
just depends on how much you can put out. Some people can do only five times more. Some people will only do a thousand, uh, uh, ten times more. Some people will do twenty times more. It depends on the the capital, the resources, the, the individual. Some people might automate only four hundred images a day. Somebody might automate four thousand. Everybody's different. Some people might automate fifteen thousand a day, depending on how many Mid Journey accounts, how many Leonardo accounts, how many you know, all that kind of stuff. All that kind of stuff makes a difference, right? But what you have now is this gap in between because the individual, as soon as they get their hands on one of these tools, their, their numbers automatically jump quite drastically. They're not going to be doing 100 anymore, 400 a day, 500 a day, 200 a day. They're going to be doubling their output at the very minimum, tripling, quadrupling, 10x, 20x, 30x. That's not unheard of. It's not unheard of at all. But the people who are stuck to doing things manually, good luck to them. They're just, they're going to get ran over. And that's the reality. And so what I've seen here is, is this is kind of like a final warning pretty much to everybody watching is that there's only one way to logically do this if you want true success. And to be honest, for most people, this is a blessing because if they didn't have these tools, they'd probably give up too early. They would probably wouldn't do any work because they're lazy. That's probably the reality. I mean, let's face it, right? Majority of people that do these kind of businesses, if, if we're not being insulting and we're just being truly, truly frank here and truly honest, truly candid, most people are lazy. Most people don't succeed. Most people give up way too early. Most people do not dedicate themselves to learning. Most people really aren't successful. And there's a reason why behind that, that 95% of the people that go into a business either break in or break even or fail. I mean, there's these are not numbers that I just made up. This is the truth. Only the top 5% really succeed. And out of that 5%, you have another, like, let's say, uh, one one hundredth of the population of the five percent who actually make it to the very heights. So these are not numbers that I'm just pulling out, but this is completely the truth, right? Only a very small percentage of people succeed in typical standards, but this is not an, a typical standard anymore. This is not a typical standard. It comes down to output, and that's what you can expect in the near future. We're talking about a year, two years, three years, four years, five years, which is relatively the near future that the people who are doing everything manually, they're not going to essentially exist from a numbers perspective. They're essentially not even going to be seen in this business. And if they have no intention of going and moving over to the other side, the side of robots, the side of machines, uh, they don't even have a chance. And that's the truth because the numbers will amalgamate. And then years after that, which is later into the future, so not necessarily the near future, but later into the future, could be 10 years from now, that it will now become a competition of who can know how to create systems who can automate the absolute best and the most efficiently. So at the minimum, there are going to be people who are automating maybe 5,000 images a day, and that's what they're outputting. But the people at the very top might be automating 50,000 images a day, 60,000, 100,000. And with those kind of requirements, what's going to happen is, and the natural competition, is these sites are going to have to adjust, right? These, these stock photography sites, the landscape will become majorly different. Maybe they might introduce some sort of payment system where you pay to have your images being sold. Who really knows? But you have to be able to look into the future and see what's coming. And the truth is, is that we have now opened Pandora's box. This cannot be closed. There are tools that exist that can do work for you. Not can, but do work for you. And they'll do them better than you would have ever done them. Think about that. Think about how crucial that is. These tools can do the job faster, more accurately, and better than you could have ever done them. Right? Even if you were a doctorate in reading and writing and math, oh, they'll, they'll still perform better than you will. They don't make mistakes. They don't complain. They don't need lunch breaks. They don't need any of that, right? And this, like I said, Pandora's box has already been opened. There is no closing this. You can't go back in time. We can't rewind the clock. And so what that means is that just more and more people are going to hop on the bandwagon. And when more and more people hop on the bandwagon, it now creates that dare I say, metaphorical diaspora between the people who are the top producers and everybody else. 
There's going to be like no midpoint. There's no middle class, if you will. Back to that third world country analogy. There will be no middle class. There will be no people who are just doing okay. It's either you're not even getting by, you're starving to death damn near, or you're very, very successful. It's That's what you can expect in the near future. We're talking two, three, four, five years from now. And really, it only starts to amalgamate based on a portfolio of, of, of contributions. We're talking tens of thousands of contributions. And if you guys remember, when I released the course, the Super Stock AI course, I'll just pull it out here to show you guys. When I released this course, I said to people in the introduction as like a motivational kind of thing, I said, don't quit in this business until you reach 10,000 images uploaded. And most people kind of freaked out when they heard 10,000 images. Like, oh my God, 10,000, that's a lot. But really, really, to be honest, for a beginner, somebody who has little to no experience, if they truly dedicate themselves, they can complete the 10,000 images in a matter of two months. It's really not that hard to create. The only thing that would really be holding them back is the um, acceptance period. So if you're familiar, like Adobe Stock, for example, the smaller your account is, the less you'll have accepted. So like, for example, if you're a brand new account, you can only uh, publish like 51 images at a time that are in the processing phase, you know, things like that. So that, that will be the only thing that potentially slows them down. But then again, they have resources to other websites that they could upload to. There's a lot of other things that they could do, right? So it's not just that they could stay on just one, one website, but you get the point. And what I'm trying to really say here is, is that if you're the type of individual that is going to decide to do things manually in this business, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at things, you're going to get run over. And it's really not that good of a thing, but the truth is, is that this cannot be stopped. This is not my opinion, and this is complete facts. And you're going to have to come up with a system that will allow you to be able to beat your competition. Because we're sitting in a game here where it's not necessarily a competition of skill anymore. Because the machines are providing the skill for you. You're not going to be able to train a machine and make it much, much better than your partner machine. It, it really won't happen. In this level, because of how easy the business is, and I dare I say easy, it, it is very easy, right? You're not going to be able to do something that is unseen or unheard of. You're just not. But what you are going to be able to do is simply create more. So it takes out the equation of quality, because if you're using the correct automation tools, you're setting it up correctly, and we've spoken about this all in the course, right? Then quality should never be the issue. And I've spoken about this before, but quality should not even be a problem. Quality is a fixable element in a matter of minutes. You get the right softwares, you do the right things, you set up the right settings, everything should be taken care of in terms of quality. It's about then quantity. That's the question. And like I said, it comes down to people's per, 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 uh, procedures, that's, and their output, that's all it comes down to. You know, the guy who's going to have 100,000 uploads is going to beat the guy who has 5,000 uploads for the most part, you know? And the reason why I say that is, like I said, is because quality is not really going to be a integral part of the system in the near future because everybody's going to be quality. Everybody's going to have quite high quality. Everybody, you know, it's not going to be necessarily something that, you know, you can kind of control. Like if I go to mid journey and I give it a prompt and you give it the exact same prompt. Yes, there will be different images that have slight variations between them, but the quality is going to be very close to identical in terms of the quality. So quality is not really of the essence um, and it's not even going to matter. You know, you're not even going to be able to control for quality any longer in the future. But hey. I'm just giving you the message, you know, it's up to you, do what you want with it, and this is not something, like I said, we can kind of turn back, um, it's going to come for all of us, and it, it's uh, either you're ready or not ready, you're going to be ready or you're not going to be ready, you're not going to make any money or you're going to make money, it, there's no difference, all right, I'll talk to you guys later, thank you guys for watching, wish you guys all the best, I'll see you guys soon, peace out, bye.